clicking into our webinar today. My name is Marnie Rose and I'm going to be talking to you about opportunities within the transport logistics sector. I work for CTEC Outsource. We're an apprenticeship training agency and work with employers of all different sizes to identify apprenticeship opportunities and embed these programmes within their organisation. Our head office is in Essex, however, we deliver apprenticeships nationally. There are nearly 1,000 different apprenticeship qualifications available to date um, and more are being produced and approved every month across all different industries and sectors. Crowdblazer groups, which are made up of large and small industries, write the apprenticeship standards which detail what knowledge, skills and behaviours an apprentice should develop, should develop during their programme and that will be assessed at their end point to pass the qualification. Anyone over the age of 16 can do an apprenticeship and the typical programme length is between one to three years. And this depends on the, the level of the programme. So the higher the level of the qualification, the, the longer the programme will be. Today, I'll be focusing on apprenticeships in the transport and logistics sector. So today, we're going to cover the following in this webinar. Um, just basically, uh, apprenticeships that are in the logistics industry, um, your um, apprenticeship journey or the programme and what that might look like for you. Um, we'll cover three specific apprenticeship qualifications in um, warehousing, um, an LGV or driver qualifications, um, and an international freight forwarding specialist qualification. Um, we'll talk about the progression routes through your apprenticeship and what that might look like. Um, we'll play you a small interview with one of our freight forwarding apprentices, and then right at the end, just run you through some important or useful information on, on apprenticeships and how to find them. So here are just a few examples of the apprenticeships that are available in this industry. There is a huge variety of apprenticeships available in aviation, the rail network um, and driving, as well as administration rules within shipping and transport and planning. Have I, as I've explained earlier, these apprenticeships are available at a range of different levels, from level two all the way up to degree level. Um, and they're no longer just for school or college leavers either. They can offer exciting pathways and progression opportunities even later on in your career and I'll cover this in a bit more detail later on. Today I will focus on just a few within our sector but also show you how to find the qualifications. So let's look at how apprenticeships work in general. On an apprenticeship you're employed to do a real job while studying for a formal qualification with a college, university, or an approved training provider like ourselves. By the end of your apprenticeship, you'll hopefully have gained the skills, knowledge, and behaviours needed to either succeed in your chosen career or progress to the next apprenticeship level if you want to. What you'll learn depends on the role you're training for. However, apprentices in every role follow an approved study programme, which means you'll gain a nationally recognised qualification at the end of your apprenticeship. You will also be constantly developing your transferable skills, otherwise known as soft skills. These are really highly valuable to our employers. These include things like communication, organisation skills, team working and problem solving, as well as knowledge of bespoke IT packages and software. So to give you a general overview of what an apprenticeship training provider would look like, once you've been recruited into a role by your employer, you will enrol onto an approved apprenticeship qualification with a recognised provider, usually within the first couple of weeks. This then starts your apprenticeship journey of developing the knowledge and skills and behaviours required to fulfil your role and to meet the needs of the qualification. You'll be allocated a tutor or development coach, as we call them, who will be with you for the duration of your programme and provide support and guidance to achieve the qualification. The learning is delivered in a number of different ways by your employer and your training organisation. Most programmes provide a, a real blended learning approach, which would include things like regular one-to-one -one visits with your coach, group working activities, um, you might attend workshops or webinars, you could complete some e-learning, there might be some formal coach, uh, classroom delivery, and also some directed self-study. So you'd be doing research projects and assignments that are set for you by your work coaches. Um, these might be um, via a day release to a college, um, it could be on your employer's site, as well as remote delivery via Teams or Zoom or other platform. So as an apprentice, you must receive 20% off the job time allocated to learning and development, 
and this must always be within your paid working hours. So apprenticeship work should not be completed at home in the evenings or weekends. The delivery of learning and development share between your employer and your apprenticeship training provider. And just the same as with any qualification, once you have received all of the training and development and are proficient, you will complete assessments at the end point in order to pass and achieve the qualification. There are a number of different assessment methods for each qualification, and include things like multiple choice knowledge tests, observations of you doing tasks in the workplace, interviews which are underpinned by portfolios of your work, um, but generally speaking, there are a few different assessment methods used at the end point so that you are really, really able to showcase the skills that you've developed. Every apprenticeship programme will require you to have achieved a minimum level in maths and English. Um, so if you haven't achieved the um, GCSE, for example, then this training will be delivered by your organisation um, called Functional Skills. Um, you will need to pass, pass Functional Skills tests um, at the level required in order to go through and pass your apprenticeship qualification overall. So there really are lots of different sources of support available to you during an apprenticeship. Support comes from your development coach and the wider business that they work in, which might include their functional skills tutors, who will help you upskill in math and English and pass those tests if you need to, as well as things like pastoral support for the many life challenges that we may come up against. Um, your employer also supports you. It might be your line manager, and, and the team that work around you, and they'll support you with the day-to-day -day training you how to do the job role. Some employers provide buddies or mentors to support you in your early days as well. There could be opportunities for you to get involved in industry events. As with our International Freight Boarding Apprenticeship, BIFA, the British International Freight Association, have set up a regular networking event for apprentices and young people, where you can hear guest speakers talk about their experiences and you'll meet other people who are new to the industry and on the same pathway as you. Today I'm going to focus on three popular programmes within this, um, within the logistics industry, um, which as I've said is a real growth sector at the moment and there's a huge number of opportunities available with some really great career prospects and salaries. So moving on first of all, we're going to talk about a warehouse operative apprenticeship. These apprenticeships start at a level two um, and they usually are a 12 month programme and it's often a stepping stone into other career opportunities. But for a warehouse role, the general duties of this job would include things like assisting with the loading or unloading of vehicles um, and checking the levels of stock, um, sorting and placing materials or items on racks and shelves. It could be performing warehouse inventory controls via scanners um, and or through a computer. Um, it could be collecting items from throughout the warehouse, preparing and completing warehouse orders for delivery. The role really best suits upbeat and motivated individuals who enjoy working systematically and productively. This fast-paced environment and energised environment really relies on someone who is organised and efficient, as well as committed to complete work to meet the business performance targets. Picking and packing products can involve a substantial amount of manual handling, including bending, stretching, stepping, reaching and lifting. Um, and with so much ground to cover in the line of duty for this role, it's really a very active and hands-on job. Um, warehouses really are usually located on the outskirts of cities, towns and villages. Um, they're positioned on large industrial sites which have good access to main roads for the ease of transporting goods. But due to their location, warehouses are not always um, located near a bus stop or, or train station. Um, so travel to work may need some prior planning if you don't have a car. Typical apprenticeship salaries for a warehouse role, um, when you start with them, would be around 12 to 14,000 pounds a year for your first year. And then salaries would increase to more like 80 to 20,000 once you've passed your qualification and become skilled. Um, as this slide shows you as well, you may start out in an entry-level role within the warehouse, however, they're really um, where you have aspirations. Um, apprenticeships really do open doors to other career opportunities. So, for example, you might step into a supervisor or a managerial role as your experience grows and the knowledge of the other areas of the business evolves. So our next apprenticeship that I'm going to talk to you about is an LGV or urban driver. There is a significant driver shortage nationally, so that again, there are huge opportunities within the driving role um, and with some fantastic salaries. So 
So large good vehicles, haulage or heavy good vehicle drivers transport goods between locations. They move, uh, move items for suppliers and customers locally, nationally and internationally. As a lorry driver, you will spend a lot of the time on the road and could be away from home frequently. So not only would you be driving, but some of the other specific duties of a truck driver may include conducting safety checks and maintenance checks on the truck, ensuring loads are evenly distributed and secure for travel. Um, it might be um, driving cargo to its destination, you'd need to monitor traffic and road conditions on that route, and also maintain logbooks and delivery paperwork. For this particular qualification and to be eligible to join a driving apprenticeship, you must be over the age of 18 and hold a car licence. During this apprenticeship, you would work towards achieving a Category C or Category C plus E licence, which is required to drive vehicles which are over 7.5 tonnes. Starting salaries for an LGV apprenticeship are around 19 to 22,000, and then when fully qualified and experienced, you can expect to easily command salaries of up to £36,000 a year. Progression routes for an LGV driver um, could be something more um, depot based, so you could go into a transport manager or a depot manager role later on down the line. So the last apprenticeship I'm going to talk to you about is an international freight forwarding specialist. A freight forwarder is an agent who acts on behalf of importers, exporters or other companies to organise the safe, efficient and cost-effective transportation of goods. This can be done by either air, ocean, road or rail. You'll use computer systems to arrange the best means of transport, taking into account the type of goods and the customer's delivery requirements. You'll use the services of shipping lines, airlines, road and rail freight operators. So this is an office and administrative based role. Um, the types of duties you would likely to carry out would be ensure all customers inquiries are responded to promptly and professionally, develop relationships with your customers, so communication skills are key. You need to adhere to the customs clearance compliance procedures and documentation that are required. And you would use company IT systems to create, manage and maintain the movement of freight. Freight companies vary in size and type, um, from those operating on a national and international basis to small and more specialised firms with, which deal with particular types of goods or operate within particular geographical areas. Apprenticeship starting salaries on average are around 14 to 16,000, and then when fully qualified initially, you would likely earn 23,000 pounds, and this would increase year on year as your knowledge and, and skills develop. Again, progression routes for a freight forwarding role could be to a more managerial role. Also consider each company that you work within will have support departments as well. So they'll have HR, they'll have an accounts team, they'll have um, IT and tech teams. Um, so you'll have great career prospects where you can apply internally for other positions um, and continue to develop your career when it could be in a, in a different or an alternative pathway to, to what you set out in. As mentioned in my previous slide, there are many career progression opportunities within this industry. So whilst you may start in an entry level role, um, as you develop and build knowledge within the sector, other higher level opportunities will present themselves throughout the course of your career and salaries will increase to reflect this. Apprenticeships range from level two, which is equivalent to GCSE, level three, equivalent to A-levels, through to level seven, which is an integrated degree or master's. I'd like to now play you an interview from one of our freight boarding apprentices who recently won a prestigious award um, which recognises apprentices' achievements. The first thing that drew me to the apprenticeship was that it was in the freight industry um, and it also involved logistics, which I've always had an interest in since studying economics at A-level. I've always been like interested in freight and how goods are moved around the world. So like imports and exports, for example. So because the interest was there in the, uh, for me with logistics and the freight industry, it meant that I've enjoyed learning from my different topics that I've done uh, alongside my job role. The longer you're there, the more responsibility I've got and which I've really like thrived on and enjoyed because it's helped me grow as a, a freight forwarder. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've received a lot of support from both my employer and my coach. So my employer's given me like a lot of time in office hours to complete all my coursework, all my revision, 
everything necessary to pass the course. I can ask my supervisor uh, who's experienced in the industry and he was always happy to help me. With also the support from my tutor um, throughout was like really, really good. As any sort of issues I've had, she's always been happy to help. You don't want to rush into something that you're unsure on. Definitely say be patient uh, and just seek out there and try and choose something that you have that interest in. Yeah, so I think it'll have a massively positive impact on my career. So it'd be nice to see myself progress um, and grow in the industry really um, in the next five years, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that short video. So lastly today, I would like to show you a couple of um, useful sites um, to help you find the apprenticeship qualifications that are available um, and how to apply to va for vacancies. I'm just going to share my screen with you. As you'll see, this is the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education. You can just type that into Google and you'll be able to find this site. And on here, if you click into apprenticeship standards, it will bring up 764 standards that are currently available and are able to be delivered. You can filter these in a number of different ways. You can either look at them via the level that you're looking for or via the sector. So you can see they're distributed against care services, catering and hospitality, construction. But for today, we'll filter to just transport and logistics. And as you'll see, there are 42 different qualifications available. We type in a keyword that you might be looking for, so freight. It will bring up the freight forging um, specialist qualification. This then gives you the full details of the standard, um, so the programme duration, the role of an international freight forwarding specialist, um, the pathways, as well as it's detailing all of the core knowledge, skills and behaviours that you'd be developing during this qualification. The other um, website I'd like to talk you through is Find an Apprenticeship. This is a government run site where um, any employer that's looking to recruit an apprentice to advertise their vacancy. So um, you would search for the role that you're potentially looking for. So today, uh, for these purposes, let's put in that we're looking for a warehouse role. Enter your postcode and then the, the distance that you're willing to travel from your home location. So let's put in today 15 miles. So when I click search, that will bring me up 11 apprenticeship opportunities within my selected criteria. And you can click into the ones that you, that you like the look of. So let's look at the warehouse operative apprenticeship with DB Schenker. And as you can see, um, it details the full vacancy of what that apprenticeship role is. The annual salary, which is £12,792. What the work activities include, as well as the working week and how long the programme is. You apply for all apprenticeships um, via this site. You will create an account on this government site and then sign in to apply for them. Thank you for joining our webinar today. I hope you found it very useful, the information that we've shared with you.